Welcome to Beyond the Horizon podcast, a show all about the Horizon ecosystem and the exciting world of blockchain and Web3. Join us as we explore the latest happenings in this rapidly evolving space and discover new horizons together. Now let's go Beyond the Horizon. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode seven of Beyond the Horizon. Today's episode, we focus on the alpha launch of Horizon Eon. We're super excited to share all of the great news around Eon with you guys. Eon's alpha launch is available now. So if you're a developer, start developing on our new chain. We would love to see you on there. And if you're a community member of another project that you would love to see join us on this new chain, reach out to them, reach out to us, and let everybody know that you want to see us work together. We would love to see as many projects that you guys are passionate about join us as possible. So that being said, today we're going to be welcoming on several special guests for the main portion talking about Horizon Eon. We're welcoming on Rob Viglioni, CEO and co-founder of Horizon Labs and co-founder of Horizon, as well as Zhang Cheng, who is the CTO of Horizon Labs, as well as, as Chief of Engineering at Horizon. In addition, we'll be welcoming on two special partners with us who are joining us for the Eon launch, and that will be Temujin from OneChain, as well as Chris from Tatum. So before we get into that, we'll just share some exciting news that happened over the last month. So a lot of that news, of course, has been different partnership announcements with different projects, which you're all very familiar with. We've also finished up our first ever hackathon. Results will be shared shortly, so stay tuned for that. Okay, and now we'll move into our interview portions. Hey everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Horizon. Today I'm excited to welcome on Temujin from Wanchain. Welcome on. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, Erica, as you uh, just mentioned, my name is Temujin. I am the VP of Marketing at Wanchain. And it is a pleasure to be with you all today. We're excited to have you. Um, so you did kind of introduce yourself already and what you do for OneChain. Uh, could you maybe go into your background in Web3 for us a little bit? Sure, yeah. Um, I got in pretty early, but maybe via a uh, you know, less common route. I first encountered Bitcoin when I was a grad student at the London School of Economics. This was back in 2012, 2013. And, um, you know, people always ask if it's, you know, blockchain or crypto or Web3 that pulled you in. For me, it was definitely, um, you know, the blockchain side of, of Bitcoin. I was, uh, you know, out running one day trying to work on my thesis and, you know, I had all these theories that I thought were going to change the world, but no real world, uh, you know, example of these theories in practice. And then, you know, suddenly just had this epiphany, you know, Bitcoin, I think it was mentioned on some podcast I was listening to. And then, you know, it really, set the course for my whole life. And here I am, you know, more than 10 years later, working full time in blockchain. Wow, that's amazing. And I love to hear that. Um, you are a crazy early adopter then. So <laughs> uh, I might be hitting you up for a lot of education since you've clearly <laughs> been around the blockchain a bit. <laughs> um, so for our community, could you explain a bit about what Wanchain does? Sure. So Wanchain, um, you know, I, the way I like to describe it best is that we're an R&D focused blockchain interoperability project. So that's a lot of words. Um, you know, today it's basically cross-chain bridges, but, you know, we are actually, if not the first amongst the first, uh, you know, in, interoperability projects back then. Officially, we've been around since 2017, but the roots have been, uh, you know, even before that. And really, you know, from the start, although you know, the blockchain landscape has changed a lot in, in those years, um, at least in kind of really broad strokes from the start. We really, you know, I think correctly had this vision that there's going to be multiple blockchains and you need these blockchains to be able to speak to each other one way or the other and kind of operate as, you know, one network if we're ever going to have any type of adoption. So that's really what block, uh, what Wanjin is focused on. Today, it exists kind of as uh, two pillars. So the first pillar is our own layer one blockchain. This is a standard EVM chain started as an Ethereum code fork, just code fork, not a data fork. Um, but whilst, you know, some changes have happened to that chain, we went to POS, you know, far before Ethereum did. Um, the real kind of purpose of this chain is to maintain parity with the EVM. So whenever there's a major upgrade to the Ethereum EVM, it will reflect it on the one chain layer one itself. 
And then the second, and arguably more important um, pillar of wine chain are our cross chain bridges. So these are you know relatively mature, you know by blockchain standards. Um, so today we have blockchain or excuse me bridges that connect more than twenty seven different networks, both layer ones and layer twos, both EVMs and non EVMs, and we do a variety of different types of interoperability or or bridging tasks. Um, of course. Kind of value transfers we call them so this is just like your tokens so bitcoin ethereum usdt whatever and then we also do um, nfts we also do cross-chain messaging in terms of kind of our you know r d this is really where we're focusing right now we work um, you know pretty closely with some organizations such as the enterprise ethereum alliance actually one chain cto is the head of interoperability at the eea so what we end up kind of trying to do is you know we start with our industry partners, research, publish some papers, really try to kind of have robust standards for interoperability. And then, you know, once this passes through the process, peer review, et cetera, then WANCHAIN becomes kind of the first public place where these standards are implemented. So, you know, relatively long-winded, but that in a nutshell is uh, what WANCHAIN is. That's incredibly, honestly, I'm uh, very impressed. Uh, a lot of that I didn't actually know about your project. So thank you so much for sharing that <laughs> with our community. Well, that's why we do these calls. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so there will be at least several bridges on Horizon Eon. As, as many people know, having multiple options is the best way to possibly ensure an ecosystem is up and running and available to everybody. Um, how is Wanchain going to participate in Eon? Sure. So definitely, I agree with the sentiment. You know, I just want to take a quick pause here and mention, you know, Wanchain is not one of those interoperability projects that thinks or wants to be, you know, the one and only solution. I think interoperability kind of fundamentally needs to be open and have multiple players. Um, you know, eventually we'll get to the point where um, it'll function more like the like the, the Web2 internet today. Um, you know, it'd be absolutely insane if you were to buy like a router and then that dictated what websites you could go to. You know, that's kind of like a, maybe a pretty bad example, but that's kind of what it feels like sometimes when you deal with um, bridges in you know, today's blockchain. So with that out of the way, um, so Wanchain will be there from day one um, for the public open launch of, of Eon, but we're already there on mainnet right now on the alpha. Um, we've bridged a few um, assets over um, right now. I have a list here. Let me just quickly pull it up. So we've bridged Eon to the Wanchain layer one, of course, also directly to Bitcoin, directly to Litecoin, and directly to the XRPL. You know, this really, I think, originally we chose these chains just to kind of reflect kind of our specialty, which is the non-EVM chains. And then there's a few assets that we've um, you know enabled already um, for for one chain the EVM chain we've done uh, BTC uh, LTC USDT USDC and XRP and then for the non the non EVMs they don't have smart contracts so it's just the, the native coin so this is just kind of the original basket the ones that are live today once we get kind of closer and interact a little bit more with the other developers on Eon and the other projects it's a simple matter not the core infrastructure is in place to you know add bridges directly to any of the any of the 27 networks we already support and then any standard asset on those chains can you know in a matter of days be bridged to Eon now. So basically um, in kind of the V1 of this collaboration or this integration between you know Wanchain and, and Eon is just bringing these value uh, value transfers over and then perhaps in the future as you know this will be dapp dependent but we may also deploy our cross chain messaging platform to Eon. Um, if there is a need. I know that we personally would love to see that. Um, <laughs> the more that we can work together to grow out what's available on Eon, the better, in my opinion. Um, and we're very, very excited to have you guys on day one for the alpha launch. It's amazing that we can work together to do this. Um, I have a question for you, and sure. it's something my team has actually asked, and it's probably something the community is going to ask as well. How does one chain enable BTC to be transferred to an EVM-based chain? Sure. Um, so one chain is relatively unique in, in terms of our core infrastructure, um, the bridge node, so to speak. So uh, it'll probably make more sense if I just take a step back and give a brief overview of how the bridge nodes work. So um, 
basically at any given moment, um, there are 25 active bridge nodes, and these are uh, permissionless nodes. So anyone, you right now, could go and deploy a uh, one-chain bridge node if you want. And you know the process or the prerequisite to becoming a bridge node is just staking um, enough assets, and I'll talk about those in a second. So you have 25 active bridge nodes, and then they in turn get re-elected on a monthly basis. So it's not always the same nodes that are you know, executing the cross-chain transactions. And they're basically elected on a, a POS logic. So the more assets you stake, the higher chance you have of being elected in a given cycle. And the reason why we have this um, you know, staking mechanism in place is because this is an additional security layer for the one chain bridge. So whilst you know we're the oldest bridge and also have never been hacked, so we're quite proud of that, but we still take you know security very, very seriously. And so this is, you know, I talked a bit of, at the start about how we do these. Um, you know, standards with the EEA and our in other industry partners. So that's something that, you know, came from there as a kind of real world example. We came up with this staking layer. So basically, um, there's always enough tokens staked into the bridge nodes to cover all of the assets that are crossing the bridge. So if ever there was any type of incident, either a hack or malfeasance from some bridge nodes, the bridge nodes themselves would get slashed. And so it's not the end user who would, you know, suffer the loss. Um, so we have this kind of core, um, you know, bridge node mechanism. And it's the same group that handles the crossing transactions from all the chains. So when you're dealing EVM to EVM, it's quite simple. We deal with smart contracts. Assets get locked into a smart contract, either minted or released on another chain. Pretty straightforward. For non-EVMs, um, it essentially functions the same way. Of course, if you don't have a smart contract platform, then we just use a, um, you know, a lock account. And this lock account you know, it's not owned by any single entity or, or no one has the private keys to it. These 25 bridge nodes, they use a process called secure multi-party computing. It's kind of like um, a better version of multi-sig, we could say. So rather than each node, you know, signing transactions and then just tabulating them, um, the actual 25 nodes have to work together to generate the key to, on the EVM chains, trigger the smart contract or on the non-EVM networks, you know, control the, the, the wallet. So with the kind of Bitcoin Eon example, um, the end user will just on Bitcoin or via you know, our bridge front end, but essentially on Bitcoin, transfer their BTC to this lock account. And then the bridge node group, they'll detect this event. And you know once everything is confirmed, then they will trigger the smart contract on Eon. And then you'll have a, like a wrap, essentially, BTC on Eon. That makes perfect sense. Thank you so much for explaining that to us. Um, so that kind of wraps up all of my questions for today. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the Horizon community or with the Wanchain community who might be listening? Sure. Um, I think for the Eon community, I would just say, um, you know, we're excited to see this ecosystem flourish. And whilst, you know, I mentioned right now on um, the that Alpha, we've bridged Eon to four chains and there's a handful of assets. Um, definitely, like I mentioned, it's very easy for us to, at this stage, add chains, especially EVMs, extremely easy, but also the other non-EVMs that we already support and, you know, any assets on any of those chains. So if there's something that you'd like to see on, on Eon, you know, you can just easily reach out to us either on Twitter or Telegram. And, you know, we're very happy to just make that happen for all of you. For us, the most important thing is really just, you know, usage. Um, you know, it's kind of meaningless to, deploy you know, bridges to hundreds of different uh, chains if there's nothing passing through those bridges. Um, so we hope to work together with the community and also importantly with the other applications that are going to build on Neon and just to make sure that the assets that they need um, are there. And so that's really just our goal. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Temujin. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'm excited to share this episode with everybody in the community. Yeah, thanks a lot and have a nice rest of your day as well. Hey, everyone. We have Chris from Tatum here today. Welcome, Chris. Great. Thanks for having me. It's amazing to have you. I know this is the first time that we're introducing the Horizon community to you and Tatum. Could you maybe tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Yeah, sure. My name is Christopher Rea. I'm the director of partnerships over at uh, Tatum. Amazing. Um, and how long have you been in like the Web3 and blockchain space? So, you know, from a work experience, it's been about uh, a little bit over a year, but I've been interested in Web3 since I would say 2018. Oh, when it was hot. <laughs> yeah, back in, 
I guess I guess I'm a veteran or something. I don't. I mean, I certainly don't feel like it, but I guess uh, I guess I am. Right. It's crazy how quickly a few years pass in this industry. It's essentially uh, ten years for every one actual Earth year, is how I picture it. Uh, yeah. I, mean, I would def. I would definitely say it's just like quarter by quarter. You know, we all we all find out the new new news, and then we we run with it, and it feels like it's been uh, it's been a year, but it's only been three three months, maybe even two months. It's really incredible. Standard fare. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so, could you tell us a little bit about what Tatum does and what your project is? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Tatum, so we're a, a software development kit, and, and really, what we're trying to do is we're just trying to make it easier for developers to be able to build on Web three. And you know, we have clients who are, you know, just a single developer that are just trying Web three for the first time. They're just going to get their API key and start building, all the way up to you know some some very large clients, names like Binance and, and others. Um, who who are using our tooling to make their project run. Nice, a little name dropping there. Uh, I always love that. Um, so users will be utilizing Tatum for something, I'm sure, as, as uh, I believe I remember a few details of the uh, agreement to bring you guys in. Can you tell us how developers can join the ecosystem and utilize Tatum? Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, once we're fully up and running, you know, you guys are going to be able to leverage, you know, all the node functionality. So you'll get access to full nodes, archive nodes directly through Tatum. Um, but we also have higher levels uh, of integration, which includes our data API. So, you know, for the developers that don't necessarily want to go directly to the node for, for information, they can u- utilize our data API uh, for things like getting balances, getting transactions. Um, similarly, for getting things like NFTs and, and token activity, you're going to be able to leverage Tatum as well. Um, but we also have something called an abstraction layer, which uh, I think is really exciting. Essentially, it allows for, for developers to be able to use JavaScript to uh, build on Eon instead of having to, to leverage uh, more native blockchain language. So that'll just make the whole process of building on Eon a lot easier. And then we'll also have uh, an API functionality specifically for generating wallets. So instead of having to either choose a third party or, or build your own wallet, you'll just be able to, to use um, use a wallet with one API call. So those are some of the things that, that we're going to be offering. And uh, yeah, excited to join the community. We're excited to have you. Um, okay, so that kind of takes everybody a little bit through like what Tatum is and how they can utilize your product. Uh, is there anything else you might like to share with the Horizon community? Yeah, I, mean, I think um, maybe the genesis of the company you know, might be interesting. Um, you know, it was something that was very impressive, you know, to me before I even started at Tatum. Um, you know, originally Tatum was, um, the idea for Tatum was really around building a crypto bank and, and the founders had built, um, all of this infrastructure for their crypto bank until kind of realizing that the tools that they built for this crypto bank is actually more prevalent for developers as a whole, instead of just focusing it on one, um, one one entity so that's you know ultimately probably three years ago when the idea was to bring it out to the broader community you know shut down the crypto bank and focus on building really really specialized and um, scalable developer tooling wow that is incredible actually i love that uh massive pivot away from their original vision into something that a lot of people can really benefit from that's incredible yeah, I mean, I think it's um, I think it's an interesting interesting story, and it kind of speaks to, um, let's say like the scalability and, and the functionality that we offer, right? Like, you know, it's 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 one thing to do you know something uh, good once; it's different if it's a highly scalable thing, and that's why we've had projects where you know they started as a single developer and then they moved their way up to actually um, a really successful project, and and we're actively investing in that. You know, we do have a, a Tatum accelerator as well. So for the developers that do want to, you know, take their idea, um, get support from a marketing standpoint, product standpoint, from a tech standpoint, and then grow with their with their project, um, you know, we do that as well. So you know, we're we're trying to find ways of making sure the community is robust and um, supporting the people who are really trying to do really cool things in Web three. That's incredible. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. 
of course, everybody in the community, go check out Tatum as well as their SDK and see how you can possibly use it in your projects that you're building. Um, so Chris, thank you so much. I appreciate you joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. Today, we're welcoming on Rob Viglione, CEO and co-founder of Horizon Labs, as well as co-founder of Horizon, as well as CTO Zane Chen from Horizon Labs and head of engineering for Horizon. Welcome to you both. Happy to be here. Thank you, Erica. I only had to ask you like 100 times to come back on the show before I got invited, begrudgingly. Oh, we don't want this to be the Rob show. This is the Horizon show. That's why it's beyond the horizon, not beyond the Rob. You, <laughs> you, did, you, did, you did threaten to force me to host it if, if I wanted that. So It's true. You said you wanted to be on more. The best way to do okay. it is to be the host. Then you're in every episode. You're an amazing hostess. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so for some of our newer community members who might not know you, could you maybe give yourself a bit of an introduction, Rob? Okay, first, I want to protest because um, I was told before this started, guys, just so you know, it's public record. I was told to do it a short intro, which I feel like is discriminatory. Why should I have to give a short intro? But anyway, I'll do it. I, I am a uh, co-founder of Rob, I'm Rob, co-founder of Horizon, CEO of Horizon Labs. Um, I like long walks on the beach and um, I like to study things, Spanish recently. And um, yeah, there's a, a lot more we can talk about beyond that if you were to let me, but I'll stop. We'll do a just Rob episode one day, I promise. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but Zane, um, this is actually the first time that the community is meeting you or being reintroduced to you in a very long time. Uh, could you give us a more detailed intro to who you are and kind of your background as well as experience in the space? Yeah, yeah. And um, <clears throat> if there was a you know, Just Rob show, I definitely would watch it. And uh, I'd love to have Rob do the audio for his, uh, you know, his uh, blog, just like listen to Rob over it um, that's a great idea i love that wow thanks for plugging the blogs and <laughs> you can host the, the show actually it's an amazing idea yeah yeah well yes uh thanks erica and hey everyone yeah i'm excited to be here um on the podcast um yes i'm zane cto of uh horizon labs uh i'm work i work out of the new york city office here in midtown manhattan um i've been with horizon labs for well, over over two years now, and I've seen us through many of the exciting launches. I mean, all the Yuga uh, launches such as ApeCoin, other side, um, Ape Staking, uh, and of course, yeah, uh, our, our own launches with Token Mint, our first tokenization platform, and now uh, the upcoming EVM. I'm a, I'm a graduate of Cornell University, our School of Engineering, same school as John, our, uh, John Camardo, a director of product who was previously here um, on the podcast, majored in computer science and electrical and computer engineering. So um, I have a good view on the hardware and software side of things. I'm uh, very technical and uh, it's very tempting to dive deeply into every little thing. But um, you know, I, I've been in startups for 12, 13 years now. And um, my last startup, I was there for seven years and now it's public. So I've gotten to see the entire life cycle of being at startups. Um, and over the years, I'd say like my expertise is more in like technical vision and execution, uh, high performing teams focus on this like rapid iterative development with which Rob has talked about uh, several times and then organizational scaling uh, to build great software and of course pay it forward to the greater uh, software and crypto community. Yes, I have a question. Probably, yes. Zane, yeah, are you yeah. going to take, are you going to, are you going to work on taking Horizon Labs public as well? I love your track <laughs> record there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, that is, um, that would be uh, one of the options for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, an exciting option for sure. And at that, and um, actually my, my first interaction was with crypto. I was, I wasn't one of those people who could say that crypto you know, I was early in crypto, but it was with Rob. Rob was the one who introduced it to me. Uh, and when I saw the technology, the underlying guts of the technology, I like um, thought, wow, how could this, 
uh, not be the future and how could it not uh, change the world? And it has already and will continue to do so. Um, and I know that, uh, yeah, what Rob mentioned about yeah, going public and um, contributing even more to the world, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So um, yeah, I'm all in for it. Can I say something else? Zane's not telling you. <laughs> I was going to say, is it? I'm, that I'm is a good thing. Zane here. Yeah. Okay. Zane and I were actually best friends from high school. I don't know if he wants anyone to know that. Yeah. It's kind of uh, every now and then you have to drop some alpha on these podcasts, right? Like what's the point of listening to them otherwise? So I don't think I cool. even knew I, that. It's a little known fact. Oh my goodness. I had no idea that you've known each other that long. I knew it had been a few years that you've known each other, but not since high school. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Even before that, middle school, French class. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Good times. That's incredible. Well, we're so glad to have you with us at Horizon Labs and Horizon helping build out the ecosystem. Uh, we're super, super excited to get to the launch of Eon, which is actually what the topic of today's episode is about. So if you guys are ready, I'd love to hop into some Q&A. Let's do it. Okay, great. Um, so the first question, um, I would love to start with Zane, by the way, for a more developer focused view on this. Uh, so I know that the community is incredibly excited for this new chain, Eon, and the development opportunities and like new activities it brings to the ecosystem. Can you kind of take us through the process of what it's been like bringing this chain to mainnet? Yeah, yeah, that's... Um... I mean, a lot of uh, images are flying through my mind right now. Um, and um, I mean, I'd say that it, it was a um, exciting process uh, for uh, everyone involved. Um, I'm very proud of the team and their hard work um, you know, for every engineer, engineering leader. It's their dream to bring their work into life. Um, you know, there was this, I mean, we talked about this um, as a team where it was like more of a, like a pulling effect. It wasn't like we were trying to push ourselves to uh, bring this to life. We were pulled into it because, you know, there, it was like a natural pull of excitement to bring smart contracting uh, to Horizon. And we were all aligned on it. So um, it was cross-functional. Uh, and many of you uh, did see kind of the foundational pieces come into play first, um, proud of our main chain team, which is responsible for delivering the foundational software. So, you know, we saw the launch of uh, Zen 4.0, and that's the underlying layer one blockchain software. It gave us this um, ability to have these version two of our side chains to support an EVM chain, uh, introduce non-seizable side chains and key rotation for our uh, certificate signers. Um, we also did a lot of work uh, on our underlying circuit, our crypto team designed the uh, circuit for our cross-chain communication protocol. Um, then our SDK team uh, did a great job building out the EVM side chain itself, making sure it's performant and scalable. Uh, and then, as you know, there's all these like integrations involved and um, uh, wallets, monitoring, alerting, uh, tools team uh, did a great job there. And then tying everything together, our DevOps team, uh, they're, they're just a core part of everything that we do, making sure that our underlying infrastructure, our network topology was sound, um, well constructed. Uh, so that includes our forgers, certificate signers, certificate submitters. Uh, and they, they, I think what I liked most is that they leveraged a lot of automation best practices. So they like did this um, infrastructure as code approach um, yeah, and from a community standpoint, you could see it. You could see it in our three test nets, like we did Dune, Yuma, and now Gobi, um, and we're about to do the alpha launch. So you mentioned though, Zane, that Erica would know about these integrations. How would Erica know about these integrations? Not a clue. <laughs> <laughs> For everyone here, Erica is the one who's making almost all of them happen. That's why. Oh, it's a team effort, so I wouldn't say I'm making them happen. We're all making them happen together, and that's that's just the way it is. Plus, if something goes terribly awry, then I don't have to take all of the blame. Do less engineering. <laughs> less engineering. It's, it's all Zane's fault. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, I view the integrations as uh, 
as magic. It just magically happens. Weird. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, so Rob, can you kind of take us through what your view of the process of launching this chain domain net has been? I sure can. Uh, maybe uh, I usually just take the question and answer um, something else. So <laughs> what I'll say is what's, uh, what's really cool and different about this EBM chain, Eon, is uh, years ago, when we would be doing BD and uh, strategic partnerships and relationships with others in the industry, it was hard to get people to take our call. Like probably when we stressed, hey, yeah, we're, we're experts in this zero knowledge proof stuff. Um, then some people who knew what we were talking about would take our calls. Now everyone takes our calls, or maybe almost everyone. <laughs> you know, a lot of people take our calls. I'll, I'll keep dialing it down. Um, because we're finally in Web3 with Eon. It, and it's a huge difference because we're finally conforming to the standards of what actually works and is popular and is being used in Web3. Uh, that's what Eon brings us. And now Horizon is, is very quickly uh, racing into that world. Um, now, like Zane mentioned, in his intro that as a company, Horizon Labs has, has been part of Web3 for some time now. We've launched some of the biggest projects uh, within Web3, especially the stuff that we were doing with Yuga Labs and ApeCoin and other side with the other deeds, uh, Ape Staking. But this is our first time where Horizon, like our baby, is getting there into the heart of Web3. And, and that's why I'm super pumped and super excited for this. So from my perspective, this is a complete game changer for us. And, uh, you know, it, that's my, my experience with it beyond, you know, the in the weed stuff of, you know, the team grinding to actually make this thing happen. And, you know, Zane went through, um, maybe I'll comment on that a little bit, actually, because there's a lot of subtlety to the things that Zane mentioned. And there's a term that he uses, uh, not to promote Zane too much here, but uh, he calls it drama free releases. And this is completely different. It's probably different for crypto, period. <laughs> you know, like uh, crypto as an industry is, is kind of ripe with with uh, rife with drama. Um, but now, as an organization, we just have, like we have this machine in place that just does things right, does things methodically, and is constantly delivering. Uh, even with us, years ago, we would deliver software maybe, maybe on like a six month cadence. Um, you know, and and there was always the the excuse, well, we were getting to know this the stuff, getting to know the you know the the stack, but then also we always had the excuse that everything's very complex, guys. This is complex. It takes longer to get out there. Um, and it was complex because we made it complex. Uh, and Zane's mantra when he, he took over, um, you know, the, the technology group was simplicity, you know, like no one's allowed to hide behind complexity and everything's decomposed. If you can't explain it, like in a simple diagram, you probably don't even know what you're talking about. So, uh, he forced everyone on day one to just, you know, map everything out on diagrams and to share that with everyone else uh, in the company, share that with their peers in different you know, departments within technology and make them available to everyone in the company. So through this, we had just a big reform of our technology group. Now things just run. They run smoothly, they run drama free, and we make use of appropriately of test nets. And like Zane mentioned, we went through three different test nets to get Eon to market. Um, this is for us unprecedented. You know, For other projects like Ethereum, it's standard, right? They have multiple test nets, you push things through, but we finally, implemented that under Zane's guidance and leadership. And now things just move. And we constantly have software going through this, like this pipeline, this assembly line through the different staging environments. We learn from them, we iterate properly, we deal with bugs before they become problems. Um, we learn ourselves from things and we let our partners um, that want to actually test out this stuff, um, do so in a timely fashion, you know, or ahead of time. Um, so anyway, that's my perspective on everything. We're finally getting into the zeitgeist of Web3. And things just really work well now uh, internally as an organization. So I would say just expect a lot more, have very high expectations to come um, because we're just delivering like crazy. We're delivering machine now. It really yeah, is incredible. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, a lot of it to the underlying spirit um, with the team, it, it was already there and it's just like enhancing the team even more. And I could I tell that uh, the excitement and, um, yeah, our, the talent of our team uh, runs very deep and um, it's just waiting to be unleashed even more. I love that. Um, so since we've been kind of talking about Eon a whole bunch, um, I know that there are some people who are joining into our community who aren't as familiar kind of what we're hoping to achieve with this new chain Eon. 
Could you maybe take us what goals you both have for this chain? And maybe we can start with Rob this time in all fairness. <laughs> Why not? Okay, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, so goals with the chain, I mean, we have um, very specific KPIs actually internally. I'm not going to share them yet. But what I can say is we're benchmarking ourselves. Um, I would say like we're going to blow away the benchmark because we're benchmarking ourselves on the median EVM chain out there. So the 50th percentile EVM chain in terms of a bunch of different metrics like TVL, uh, unique wallets, active wallets, um, you know, number of smart contracts um, and, and other metrics. And we're basing ourselves up within the first 90 days, we want to be better than the median, right? I think we're going to blow that away with just everything that's already happening. The partnerships, many of them um, that you lined up for us, quite frankly. Uh, and we just keep grinding on it. But what I can say is, is way different now about the project. Like before I started a, a thought of we, we had this like six month delivery cadence as an organization. Now we're like weekly delivery cadence, like across the different stack that we, we uh, maintain and, and we're developing. It's like every week there's just new deliveries, just you know, drama free quietly in there. But what's going to change now? My expectation with Eon. It's no longer on us. And by us here in this case, I mean, either the Zen Blockchain Foundation, either Horizon Labs, either any of the other uh, d developer partner organizations we have uh, building in Horizon like Tixel. Uh, it was dependent on these organizations to deliver software themselves. But now we have an EVM that's a common standard that everyone in Web3 knows how to build on. And we're going to have now delivery into our ecosystem of a lot of different protocols and dApps and just fun, interesting things, NFT projects. Uh, by community members, by companies, by like other Web3 organizations. And it's just going to be a continuous flow. Like there, there's parts of it where we're literally going out there and, you know, tapping our networks. Hey, come look what we've done. Our community members are super active and everything. But now that we're having the community itself, it's just really like initiating and catalyzing these things entirely on their own. And I, I expect um, we're going to just see this like constant cascade of now of development and innovation. Uh, coming into the Horizon ecosystem that just wasn't there before. Amazing. And then Zane, uh, do you guys have specific goals by way of engineering that you could share with us? Yeah, I mean, um, to complement what Rob said, uh, you know, Ethereum being that common standard, um, you know, with Horizon and the launch of the EVM, it, it, it's kind of like the best of two worlds, right? We have Ethereum, that common standard that Rob mentioned, and bringing the community in, smart contracts. Uh, and, you know, we were already a big part of the NFT uh, movement in Ethereum. And, uh, you know, yeah, we have Zen. Um, and, you know, with Zen do our horizontal scaling mechanism, um, and our snark enabled cross-chain protocol, it is very special. Uh, you know, blockchains aren't one size fits all. Um, you know, there's this need for application specific uh, side chains and to customize the side, the blockchain for a variety of needs. And I, I know that Rob has mentioned this before, this concept of like Zen and Ethereum being Zen Ethereum. You know, it's like um, a very powerful uh, concept. Um, yeah, I mean, some other things that come to mind is that, you know, it, it is like uh, us uh, believing with full conviction blockchain will change the world for the better. Globally, assets will be tokenized. And um, I mean, operations, business logic, uh, it's going to be converted into smart contracts even more so. And our economic lives, yeah, they're going to be on public ledgers. Uh, so Eon does mark this like giant leap. Uh, for us, and um, it is part of our mission to secure the world's transition to Web3. Sorry, Zane said something really cool there. Can I comment on that? <laughs> so, okay, thank you. Um, okay, so Zane said that like the world's going to tokenize, um, paraphrasing. There, there was a, a couple of months ago, I was in our New York office, and Zane and, and you know a handful of others, and, and I got into a room, had a clean whiteboard, we locked the door, and we said, let's rethink everything. Like, this bear market sucks. And you know what? Like every organization, every period of time should just reevaluate everything and put everything up for debate and, you know, potential change. So we debated and we, we mapped out what would be our ideal strategy 
as an organization, Horizon Labs, um, you know, us being developers in the Horizon ecosystem, what would be an optimal strategy for you know combining these two things? Or like, what you know, does our company strategy map the ecosystem strategy? You know, because they're they're different and distinct, right? And then we we started from the very basics and thought, what would like a, a great blockchain ecosystem look like ten years from now? And then the way we piece it together is exactly like the Verizon strategy that, that we envision and we're trying to really evangelize and bring to market of having this world of, like Zane said, you know, the world needs not just a, one type of blockchain for everything or one size fits all type of blockchain. Even for things like if being in a different jurisdiction, you might re- have different legal or regulatory requirements that require configuring of your network differently, right? There's lots of different reasons you can think of for why you would have different runtime environments, different infrastructure, different consensus rules, whatever. And our vision with Horizon, I think, fits exactly what we thought. Like what was kind of cool was we ended up just, you know, through like a full day of debating things right back with what we think uh, Horizon excels at today and what we're bringing to market. And I think that what, like every bear market is an, an opportunity to question everything. We, we all should, right? Every project. But it was cool that we landed right back where we started. And I think we're on an awesome, you know, uh, mission, vision, strategy. And it's being delivered right now. Eon's probably the most important deliverable on this longer term vision that we've ever had. And it's just a start. And there's so much more going beyond Eon. That's very true. And I realize now that we've all been talking and we keep throwing around the term alpha phase, right? But maybe our community doesn't necessarily know what the alpha phase is. Um, Zane, maybe you can help our community understand a little bit more about what the alpha phase is and what they can do on Eon currently. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um... Yeah, there's this concept of alpha and beta being like A and B. Uh, so it's like uh, what leads up to a more official launch. And so alpha is this like first initial phase. Um, and, and usually it's like an, a mix of internal an internal uh, launch within the organization and opening it up to a limited uh, group of uh, external users. Um, and its main objective is to say, hey, we got the core functionality in here and we want the help of the community uh, to help us identify significant issues, bugs, um, anything that needs to be addressed, uh, have us exercise, have them exercise it well um, and uh, yeah, for us to respond to it would make it better. Um, and uh, yeah, for Eon specifically, the alpha launch, um, it involves a fully functional Ethereum virtual machine. Uh, so that also includes a block explorer to visualize all the transactions, um, the ability to write and deploy uh, smart contracts on uh, mainnet. Uh, also the, the use of third uh, party tools um, to deploy on top of uh, Eon, uh, so, such as third web, um, and, um, and also have the ability to bridge um, tokens from uh, a chain to Horizon uh, Eon, uh, so that includes like uh, one chain, whether that's uh, bridging Bitcoin, Litecoin, XRP. Um, so that yeah, that encompasses like this initial alpha phase. Incredible! Thank you so much for helping walk us through that. Um, so now that we have that understanding of where we're at currently with Alpha, what comes next for Eon, Rob? Beta. <laughs> Does no. that make sense? Is that what you mean? <laughs> yes. Can you, okay. can you explain how the alphabet works too while we're at it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it's alpha, then beta, then we're going to do the, the official launch. Um, schedule wise, like, so we, we do have time schedule. We obviously, we live in the, in the real world where everyone wants to know when our thing is going live, when can we expect this or that. Um, but at the same time, these are milestone based deliveries, right? So basically what we're doing is we're launching these releases when we hit certain milestones. So for alpha, it was exactly what Zane said, having a fully functional EVM environment so the developers can come in and deploy anything they want. Um, so that includes data indexers, oracles, um, dev tools, you name it. But going from there, we're focusing, uh, more in, by the way, you should be answering this, Erica. You're the one who put these, <laughs> these strategies together, right? And you're executing on them. Uh, but then we're ratcheting it up. So can you do more? Can you actually have now swaps and like certain DeFi functionality in the ecosystem? 
so that you can, you know, not just, you know, want a minted token uh, with like a, you know, an ERC20 or 721 contract, but can you do something with the token, right? I'm sure you can bridge into another ecosystem potentially. Well, not really because the bridges are for like the chains that are tokens that exist in other ecosystems, but um, can you swap it? Um, can you create derivative instruments based on it? Like, can you, can you, um, you know, stake it into a contract that you can uh, borrow on? Can you lend it out, right? So there's a bunch of other functionality that we want to hit certain functionality minimums. Then we're going to launch the beta around that. And then when we hit uh, a certain amount of, you know, say like, um, I, I don't want to say the liquidity targets, but having people actually do things on chain <laughs> that are useful, and then having other partners come in to add um, certain dApps that are interesting and unique for Horizon, um, then we're going to roll into our, um, official launch. You know, again, like I said, we live in the real world, so we have to talk about timelines, even though there really are milestones behind these things. So even when we say you can expect this in something like September or October, the reality is when we hit the milestones, we're going to, we're going to do the launch. And as, as, uh, an organization and an ecosystem around that, we're going to be ratcheting up, uh, awareness campaigns, community building, dev grants, hackathons, releasing different tools for people to do different types of things like uh, cryptographic tools related to uh, zero knowledge proofs so that we can have privacy oriented developers there. We're going to do all this. And we have very, uh, I like to say sophisticated campaigns built around these things, but there's a lot that goes into uh, building out an EVM ecosystem. And it's just really exciting. That is very exciting, honestly. And um, I'm hoping that maybe Zane can also take us through kind of what he sees coming next to Eon as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I agree with um, what Rob mentioned, but, um, you know, uh, as we uh, go into alpha and then beta next, I could picture Rob and I coming back on this podcast uh, for the beta and interviewing you, Erica, and oh, no. <laughs> having you go through all, all the beta stuff um, uh, and, you know, the magic that you're working. Um, but uh, yeah, just to add on um, to what Rob said uh, around like um, more and more activity on the chain, doing more, um, you know, it, it is our goal to make it um, easier for developers to develop. Um, so. Yeah, that would be include oracles like Pith and Band Protocol supplying this like real world market data, like price feeds, um, and DAO tools as well. Um, Snapshot is already integrated for the alpha, but we're working through uh, like the DAO process with Tally. Uh, indexers that includes like Covalent in the graph and RPC partners like Anchor and Tatum. So we yeah, are just building all of that out. Um, like Rob mentioned, it, it does take some time. Zane just dropped some alpha on that one. He Horizon dropped Dow, so he much alpha. Wow. I know, <laughs> seriously. Horizon Dow, that's amazing. That is, and I know it's probably like the worst kept secret of ours at this point, but <laughs> it is very exciting. I know it's something that uh, I'm looking forward to as both a member of the team at Horizon Labs and also a community member at Horizon. Um, so I'm sure everybody else in the community and the team is just ex as excited as I am. But yes, that was a ton of alpha. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So you did mention a lot of partnerships already, Zane. Um, so I thought maybe we could also see kind of uh, what partnerships or use cases Rob is looking forward to. Okay. So I, I'm, uh, you guys may not know this, my pseudonym on uh, you know, the crypto channels is called FinPunk, right? So I'm particularly interested in the DeFi stuff that's going to happen on chain. I've really wanted it for a really long time. Uh, and especially over the years, so we've had um, Horizon thus far has been this UTXO based blockchain where, you know, kind of missed the whole DeFi thing in the, the world of UTXOs. Um, and now where we're going account based EVM and there's just so much that now we're going to be able to do. I, I'm really passionate about us replicating like a, a decentralized finance world uh, in Horizon and then being part of the broader DeFi and Web3 movements out there. Uh, there's a lot of really social implications to this stuff. You know, to you know, put that kind of um, you know, idealist hat on is I, I think like, it's just so, super cool that we can have a system where anyone in the world can have like their version of a smart contract based bank account, 
right? And actually, uh, you control the funds of your own bank account. You don't have to ask anyone permission for it. Maybe you live in a part of the world where like you don't have like a formal you know, identity, like a paper identity and so forth. Or maybe you don't make enough money to have a bank account because you actually have to have certain minimum uh, thresholds in order to make it even worthwhile given fees. But having the ability to be able to park your assets in a decentralized finance world that offers all of you know what um, mature capital markets have to offer, especially with synthetic instruments, I think is amazing. And like, I'm just super happy and proud that now that's coming to Horizon. For sure. And Zane, maybe you could also take us through some of the use cases or additional development that you're really interested in seeing coming to Eon. Yeah, there, there's two that come to mind. Um, I can't get, I can't let go of like um, the metaverse stuff. <laughs> so um, I could certainly see us like, um, you know, doing our meetings, um, virtual meetings in the metaverse in like a digital castle in the sky. But, Zane uh, forced me to buy an yeah. Oculus years ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. We'd be uh, doing this podcast sitting on NFT dragons that we minted. Um, uh, so yeah, that that whole um, category. Um, and then also, you know, um, uh, uh, our team uh, on the crypto side, uh, cryptography and cryptographic engineering side has um, been working on some uh, interesting privacy use, use cases, such as uh, private uh, on-chain voting, um, they're developing um, and have done some great work uh, working on an extension to Open Zeppelin, where you know, we can do hidden vote cryptography uh, on those contracts. Uh, so I'm excited about that, and we're also in an exploratory phase in selective confidentiality and uh, looking deeper into the, uh, that area. That's incredible. Um, so that is a lot of opportunity for development. Do you have any suggestions for new developers and community members joining us, Zane? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you know, uh, Gobi is out there now. So uh, it is our uh, permanent test net. It is the playground. So I'd say get involved, you know, um, have fun and uh, ask questions, get help, deploy some contracts. Um, everything that you need to get started is on our website, uh, eon.horizon.io. Um, Rob, Rob mentioned hackathons. Um, there's one, I believe, coming up soon. And so, um, yeah, just get getting involved. Amazing. And Rob, we wouldn't be able to end this podcast ever if I didn't also ask you for your opinion on how developers and community members can join us and participate. Guys, I'm a, I'm a Discord junkie and I, I'm on our Discord every day. Uh, I recommend everyone, like even if you're a developer, like maybe especially if you're a developer, come join our Discord. And what I think sets us apart from other crypto communities and, and yeah, I, I've, uh, like Zane alluded to, I've been in crypto for a while, um, kind of no spring chicken anymore. And I would say what's unique about our project and community is um, the culture that we have, the ethos. Just we really, we help each other out. We're, we're nice. Like we're nice people. We we enjoy what we do and it's like a fun environment. Okay, maybe Erica disagrees, like, but um, it, it's different. So you would join, like, come join the community, like check it out, like, come chat with us. Um, you know, I, I'm there every day. So, uh, you know, I, that's what I recommend people do. And then from there, you can branch off, depending on what your interests are. Um, we really need community evangelists, people that come in and just get the, mes the mission, get the ethos, and really want to make a difference out there. Uh, those are the kind of people that, like, I really want to see in. And, um, you know, we're here to help. Like, we're, we're completely, you know, like, mi casa, tu casa kind of um, philosophy. That's my amazing Spanish that I've been learning. I mentioned that at the beginning. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> but but come check it out. Come hang out. Um, you know, and, and let's build together. I love it. Um, so I have two more questions for you guys. And I feel like this is probably one that I should have asked you kind of sooner. Um, I know that the development of this chain and this other uh, products that go around it has been a really lengthy process from start to finish, faster than it used to be, but still a very lengthy and uh, long process. What are some interesting lessons that you've both learned from this experience? Rob, go ahead. Well, I, 
I, I, I know what I want to say. Maybe I'll say it first because Zane really knows what he's talking about with it. Um, so uh, I'm going to say lessons that we learned. Don't try to do everything ourselves. Like, so the reason why this particular chain took so long was such a, a drawn out process was because uh, we started off like just to, just to be upfront. We, we started off with probably the wrong architectural approach and then we forced it to fit. And then we did a lot of optimizations around that and continuous improvements around it. And then a very myth methodical uh, path to get to market. I wouldn't change any of the methodical stuff. I think that we, we really have crafted a gold standard about how we deliver software now. But what we're doing differently now than what we did years ago is we're not going to be doing everything ourselves. Um, we're not going to be um, trying to invent everything from scratch. We are going to be starting with the best of what already exists in the, in the industry, carve out little pieces of that that we can do particularly well and make that our competitive advantage. And that's our starting point. Right. So now um, I'll say this, Zane's going to probably, you know, not be super happy with me. For it, but I mean, like, I've been like for people that hang out like on uh, Discord, I say this stuff anyway. Um, but like we're, we're looking at um, integrating into one of the other uh, very popular SDKs that are out there. Um, and like this is just a new way of doing business for us. So instead of like maintaining five different pieces of software, like our current SDK, we're now looking at integrating a module into one of the, the most popular, widely supported and useful SDKs out there. So what we learned was start with what other people are doing really well already. Make sure that we keep everything very modular. So that instead of trying to like having to redo everything, um, when we want to make changes or improve or modernize, we can just swap out modules and we can continuously innovate on the modules. And even just following this path, makes it more uh, inviting for other developers to come in and contribute because you don't have to know the entire monolithic code base to contribute. You could just specialize in a module, and contribute on the margin in that module. So we learned a lot of lessons over the years, guys. I have to say, like, Horizon's back, and now we're going to be uh, like a force to reckon with in the industry. Incredible. And how about you, Zane? What are some lessons that you've learned through this experience? Yeah, I mean, um, certainly um, not building everything ourselves and taking the, uh, the best of what's out there and then letting us uh, focus on you know our specialty. Um, uh, that's certainly um, a big um, learning going forward. And um, I mean, uh, for me too, it's um, around like even more iteration and faster cycles. So it's like getting it out there, getting it out to our community you know, so that um, they could use it and creating those feedback loops uh, so we can get better. And um, you know, we want to tap into the um, the greater talent of our community too. So, um, you know, um, as we're releasing new things, we'll get it out there and we'll uh, receive the feedback from them and we'll build, build it out together. I love that. So last question for you guys. Um, Zane, are there any parting thoughts you'd like to share with the community? Uh, well, uh, you know, the launch of the EVM chain, it is like, it is a special moment for us. Um, and, um, you know, we, we do have a lot of momentum now. And what is, I mean, what is momentum, but a series of like special moments uh, that build on top of each other. So um, I, I do feel it and the team feels it. And I know that um, a lot of community members feel it as well. Um, it's undeniable. And um, yeah, we'll continue to uh, with this momentum uh, to deliver uh, good to the world uh, and make it better. And of course, Rob, we always love your parting thoughts, which is why I saved you for last. I was last. just waiting for this moment. Okay. <laughs> um, so what I want to say is it's, um, remember that, that story that I was telling you guys a couple months ago, we, we went there to rethink our strategy. One thing that I didn't mention about that was um, what was a really interesting exercise for me was to, you know, like in, in these bear markets, we always um, question everything that's going on. Um, and one thing I questioned was, is this industry going to exist in five or 10 years? Like, is what we're doing here important? Or are we just kind of like in our own little hype bubble, right? Um, and this is why I started bringing up that story. And <laughs> I forgot to close the loop on it. What Zane said about tokenization, absolutely. When you actually close your eyes and think about, will this stuff exist five or 10 years from now? God, God, this is where the world's going. Absolutely. We're talking like everything that's out there right now should be digitized. And when it's digitized, why shouldn't it be tokenized? Like anything that has value, like discrete value and can be traded in some way and not just traded, but transferred, 
should probably be tokenized, right? Um, it should probably like there's so like vast swaths of our economy, especially with AI, they should probably be on automated smart contracts and just executing per some if then statements and, and kind of like functional commands instead of human beings waiting for some event to happen and clicking a button, right? Um, everything that we're talking about, like like self sovereign uh, identity, ownership of your, your own assets, ownership of, and uh, monetization of your digital life, these are all mega trends um, that are going to happen. Like guaranteed going to happen. Um, and this industry enables all of it like, or enables it is kind of like an under, underlying substrate that enables so much of it. So this is happening. Web3 is a thing. This is not just a passing fa phase. And we've been building for years with a particular vision uh, for like how this will look in three, five, 10 years. Uh, and I think we're doing a pretty good job of it. And what, why now I'm so confident in what we're doing is because we're paying so much attention to what is going on in our own industry. And we are just you know, being laser focused on what we can do to add value on the margin within our industry versus trying to replicate everything. Um, so Web3 is a thing is happening. I'm super excited and would not want to be doing anything else with my life. And I think what we're doing at Horizon is going to be really a really important part of that. Amazing. Well, thank you both so much for joining us today, Rob and Zane. It's been a huge pleasure and we'll have you on again soon, hopefully for the beta launch. Yeah, a thousand requests later, you'll finally have us back on. I try. <laughs> joking, <laughs> joking, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Horizon. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue to discover the limitless potential of the Horizon ecosystem. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.